How's it going, everybody? Today is Thursday. I've got one of my weekly lessons with Matt's coming up here shortly. Me and Dada are also meeting up later to make some beats. Gonna be a good day at the studio. Let's get it. I feel like the problem with a lot of pop music is that it just loses people's interest with rap. Rap songs are so fucking short that it's really hard to lose interest in like a minute, you know, like, so what's your take on song structure? Open ended with that. <laughs> so, I mean, first off, the music that you want to create is most important. If you want to make songs that are eight minutes long, make songs that are eight minutes long. Yeah. If you want to make songs that are a minute 30, make that. In terms of today, everybody has a short attention span. So like in terms of that, like having shorter songs also means like, okay, this person can listen less to this song and move on to another song yeah. or repeat it again. Panini by Lil Nas X is like <laughs> just over two minutes, right. but it's pretty catchy, so yeah, people yeah, listen yeah. to it a lot. Whereas like artists like Steve Lacey, he has songs that are also a minute 30, but also songs that are eight minutes long. There can be a mixture of both. The resources I mostly have are either like way conventional and are like very traditional or they're like strictly rap. You're really the only person that I feel like works with both or has, you know, like been around both a lot. Mm. They're pretty much all in the stuff of like eh, three and a half, four minute songs. That's how it's always been. So, so what you're talking about, it was like having three different like choruses kind of? Yeah, yeah. Mentioned? Like three different options to pull from and then just kind of structure it based on like how it would keep somebody's attention. So I'll talk personally, like yeah. my, my band, we do similar things when we play music. We have a main chorus emphasizing the meaning of the song. That's like the hook, if you want to call it. There's also a part before it that we often do called the pre-chorus. It's like a smaller chorus section, something that's going to introduce the chorus. Yeah. You can also switch that on the back end and do a post-chorus. You could have a song structure where you introduce the song. You have some kind of intro. Yeah. You start with the verse. The verse ends. You, you have a pre-chorus that's going to introduce the chorus. Chorus is super catchy, but the pre-chorus is also catchy because you, you're like, oh, this is the pre-chorus. I know the chorus is coming now. Yeah, yeah. And then, or there's like a post-chorus where like it simmers down into like a jam. Yeah or like there's a different kind of like word structure. So then you go into a second verse, do that again. And then instead of going into a third verse, you do like a bridge where there's a chord change, a change in the musical song structure. So you're playing chords in different orders. You change the key. That's like, that's rock music structure. And it's also popular in all genres, punk, hip hop, r and I mean, your idea of that mm -hmm. is cool. Okay. You could do that. Yeah, that's the the one thing I wanted to make sure was just that like it wasn't out there, out there. Like at least like it, yeah, it, some other people have, you know, had the same idea and stuff like that. So really it's up to you what kind of music you want to make. If you want to do that like rock and roll style and apply it to your pop music, cool. Do it. Yeah. The single method is like yeah, you can your first that, two right. songs, you could be like, yo, I'm trying this new song structure. Let me know what you think. Yeah. And like give some people like the couple songs and then if like people aren't as receptive to it you know maybe maybe try a different song structure you have that quicker feedback that yeah way. yeah so when it comes to vocal processing if you had to pick like a chain of events do you have an idea of what the the format would look like bare yeah. bounds what would you do i think eq comes first and then after that, it would be compression. After that, if there's any frequencies that were really outstanding, I guess like a de would take care of some of them. And then to like delay and reverb to give whatever like presence of the room you would need. You have a very good idea of what to do cool. then. Okay. You're already starting off at a good point. If there's ever a time to use autotune, is it like more of a rule that autotune should come after compression? The compression really is just to bring up some levels. So when you're talking about autotune, it depends how powerful the voice is. If the voice is pretty powerful, you probably don't need to compress before the autotune. No. And this also has to do with the microphone also. Sometimes different microphones have different tones that like right. pick up easier. So this EQ right here, so this is without. I start sipping, start tripping. There's a few things I notice. I notice your voice on the lower end sounds a little boxy. I also notice uh, towards the higher end, there are some harsh tones also. So listen to the high. I start sipping, start tripping. There's some S's yeah. that come through. So if I turn it on, this is EQ on. I start sipping, start tripping. It's very subtle. You probably won't even notice it. But when I isolate some of these frequencies, mm. let me pull this one up that I dragged down. I start sipping, start tripping. Yeah. You hear that one? And a cool thing about how octaves work in music and also in science, every octave, the frequencies like multiplied. It's doubled. Yeah. 
If I find this frequency, this is at 295, there's going to be one very similar to it, double to it. I start sipping, start tripping. I don't like that tone. <laughs> I found some of these higher tones. I start sipping, start tripping. This one. So now EQ is done. Now, next, I add a compressor. You're gonna have parts where you're louder and parts where you're softer. Compression, kind of like bring the high tones a little closer to the lower tones yeah. and bring those volumes to kind of like to a center. In this case, I actually had a pretty high ratio on this one because I noticed you were a little quiet at times. And a lot of the things I do in my sessions, I have layers of compressors in my chain at different times. Oh, okay. So like I'll do a little compression here or there. And by doing that, you actually like compress some effects that come with it. Next, I have a de -esser. This is kind of like a bright pop setting. It's going to dig in a little deeper. So it's cutting those tones. Out. So before. I start sipping, start tripping. After. I start sipping, start tripping. And then at the end, it's more artistic stuff. H delay is what I added on your voice. I also have stock reverb here. I start sipping, start tripping. Nothing crazy. So those are the essentials. What I like to do is go a little bit deeper. I like to attack the boxiness because a boxiness is like, if I was to speak like this, that's yeah, the boxiness. Yeah, yeah. If I was to just solo this section, I can pick the frequency that. I start sipping, start tripping. So around here. So I'm gonna turn this down. I start sipping, start tripping. So anytime you speak, it's cutting it a little bit, but it's also not taking out a lot of your right. tones. Yeah. All right, next, a very popular thing to add, especially to voices, is saturation. Yeah, what is saturation? If you were to record something going into something analog, so say you had an analog EQ, an actual hardware EQ, say I took your voice recorded on the microphone. And then I said, you know what, I want to send it through an analog something. The voice coming back out of it is going to have some of these different distorted tones and different frequencies. It's going to be subtle, but that's saturation. It's okay, okay. So it's like a very subtle distortion. There's different kinds of saturators. I use the Sound Toys one because it's beautiful. So before the saturator, I start sipping, start tripping. After. I start sipping, start tripping. Yeah, that's, that's like night and day. Questions, concerns? Um, no, that's pretty much it. Thanks for coming in, bro. Oh, thank you for having me. Man. So we're just doing beats today, bro? Yeah, that's all I want to do. Honestly, that's how I'm about to be for a minute. This? Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of hard. Thinking a clap or a snare.
Oh, oh. they're both not nice, man. <laughs> Dude, they're so they nice. They're both nice as shit, yeah. We can make both. Let me like... hear this one. Let me hear this one again. That's <laughs> Yeah, I'll hold it there.